hello i'm hoping that you can hear me there um i am hoping you can see me as well i'm i'm trying to i can't look at my screen um i'm having to look at a webcam i will tell you that i did buy a portal and it does work very it did work very well um a facebook portal but for some reason, Facebook has stopped me being able to use it to uh, do talks. Um, I can still contact friends on Facebook um, if they wish to answer. Um, now, I have to tell you as well that you will remember if you are keeping... I have a strong... Uh, well, not a strong king cold, but quite a bad cold at the moment. Um, which is actually quite nice. It's quite nice to feel it's not COVID because my nose is runny. Um, but it's quite nice to remember what a cold feels like. Um, I did have a flu injection last year, but um, made to be aware. I mean, I haven't been reinvited back to the surgery this year for another flu injection anyway. Um, sorry, I think there's something on my screen possibly preventing the uh, video going through. Haven't been invited back to the surgery for another flu injection anyway. And I believe that supplies of flu injections are, um, well, in short supply, perhaps. Um, it was really, um, I suspect unfortunately that um well i hope that many people didn't used to die of flu um i certainly didn't notice myself many people in even in the old days dying from flu though people did die of pneumonia i suspect that the flu um injection was i mean it was a step too far i thought um, it was too preventative um, rather than curative when I knew from being in mental hospitals that things such as plasters and scissors and uh, bandages and uh, germaline were all in short supply. Um, I know that... Um, sorry, I'm just having to think here. I'm almost losing my thread. Um, I know that, um, yes, um, it may have been that actually the motives behind the flu injection were to stop anyone having a day off work if they, or, or uh, to prevent them ringing up and saying, I'm sorry, I can't come to work for three or four days because I seem to have flu. Um... But uh, given the light of COVID anyway, um, you know, I, I certainly am not going to be rushing for a flu injection myself now. It, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm perfectly happy um, having been written off from the workforce anyway um, to, uh, to uh, continue with the cold for some time. And to show respect towards other people um, and not to necessarily want to transmit my cold. <coughs> but I'm, I'm feeling in some ways relieved to have a cold. Um, and I hope I won't die from it. Um, yes, so my um, Facebook portal stopped working um, for the, um, as far as the aspects of being able to make um, live videos on Facebook went. Um, the Guardian newspaper, the Guardian Weekly, may have been disappointed also because I was trying to review the Guardian every Saturday. Um, but um, I, I had also, I mean, I, I remember telling you that I was subscribed to both Gu The Guardian Weekly and New Internationalist. Um, I'd paid New Internationalist a yearly fee 
and uh, got a yearly subscription also for my nephew and was very much interested in trying to keep that venture which I do respect going as well as trying to support in a way the Guardian Weekly but I was worried because um, so much reading material was coming through the door that I wasn't getting time to keep up with. Um, I have to say that I've since, oh, I had to mention as well, unfortunately I've seen an advert now on television advertising um, Microsoft 11, a Windows 11. So I'm making this video before um i well i know that windows and microsoft are short of money and they have been subsidizing us to some extent um i do pay them for microsoft office though they know i don't use it much in some ways or haven't been over the years i have tried to keep they keep saying that i haven't paid that bill often when i have um but the idea of bringing out microsoft 11 which i can't imagine will offer any progress at all and will almost certainly threaten to offer regression um is worrying to me um though i know they may need the money somehow um so i opened um this guardian weekly um magazine um today vanishing point it says it's about climate change to an extent um life and death on the perilous migrant route from west africa to the canaries <laughs> <coughs> global heating is it too late to reverse climate change um you will see on the that there is a photograph of an olympics actually oh sorry i've got another slight bug thing turned up on my computer there's um a photograph of an olympics set in syria in a, in um, a refugee camp situation sort of which um in which Hundreds of thousands of migrants are situated. Um, there's nobody seeming to watch the Olympics. James O'Pair, if you're watching this, I give you my best wishes. And I'm thinking of you in Kenya. And I know that you um, sent me your CV once. And um, that it had to do with the encouragement and uh, keeping the spirits up of young people in Kenya and with sports to some extent it says deadly crossings a global war warming and boarding school blues in europe's ongoing migrant crisis much media attention understandably focuses on mediterranean sea crossings from north africa but our big story this week focuses on another deadly passage from Africa's west coast to the Spanish Atlantic Territory of the Canary Islands. While official death rates are comparatively low, concerns are growing that undocumented fatalities on this extremely dangerous crossing could be many times higher. Sam Jones reports from Gran Canaria. The second paragraph, as extreme weather fueled wildfires continued to blaze in several parts of the world, a major new report from hundreds of top scientists laid bare the severe extent of our damage to the Earth's climate and the disaster looming if the slim chance to avert global heating above 1.5 C is not grasped. Environmental editor Damien Carrington 
analyzes what the IPCC report means, while on our opinion pages, the UK government's chief scientific advisor, Patrick Valance, warns starkly that only a complete transformation of our societies, um, only a complete transformation of our societies can now arrest the global, global warming process. Third paragraph. English boarding schools such as Eton and Harrow are famed for producing leaders and captains of industry worldwide. But what are the emotional scars of family separation at such a young age? Author Richard Beard, who passed through the system at around the same time as UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, explains why such institutions are the last place we should be looking for our future leaders. I'll report back when I've read them. I've got... I, I'm keeping the third paragraph in some measure of scepticism. I do um, somewhat support and like Boris Johnson, as you know, um, and I have experienced not boarding school, thankfully myself, but private school, certainly, even private primary school. And uh, I do, well, I will talk about it later. <laughs>